Okay, so I need to be a little bit further back from the... Uh, it's, it's very George Bush sort of take on it all, though. What? Am I either with you or against you? <laughs> That's how I feel about everything. Yeah, it's got haven't, loud since you came here. Uh, haven't you noticed my complete lack of nuance? Further away. Here? Further away. Here? Further away. Here? Uh, towards the door. This isn't fair, you can see stuff and... How am I still so loud? <laughs> Well, if you just talk at separate times, that'll probably make it easier. Okay. I don't mean do like, you know, you do 45 minutes and I do 45 minutes separately. We're going to do an hour and a half show. Because I could have got away without leaving the house. We, um, James and I, mm. are sitting a really long... Uh, the thing is... When we're in a studio, yeah. we're probably further away than this, Yeah, but we're not in a studio, which is why you'll probably hear background noise. And an echo. And an echo. We're in a very big room. We've been in here for about 50 minutes. Feels longer. About an hour. 10 minutes. Does it feel 10 minutes longer? It feels, it feels... I feel like I've been around an hour and a half. I've been forced to meet a new person who was very nice. Yeah, I'm sorry But I'm, I'm in no mood to have uh, social interactions with strangers today. Loads of uh, stressful stuff with studios and loads of um, uh, stressful stuff with software, which I was certain wasn't on the computer. But he was certain... Uh, we, we, invite, uh, we asked... After lots of stressing, we asked uh, a techie person to come over and, and get Audacity on the computer, and he looked at it for five minutes and said, mm. oh, it's already on here. I'm sure I looked. I'd like to complain. I want to do that, the old, oh, there's an error of my life, I'll never get back. But all I would have filled that hour with is watching Community and moping about. So You're not even in the crying and masturbating I phase can't, of your life. I, I have not masturbated this year. Really? Really. I don't think I've masturbated this week. I haven't. In fact, it, and I don't think I did in December. There's just no point, Nick, anymore. And frankly, the new tablets I'm on have stripped my libido completely. So I'm not even like I'm. Before, I was horny, but it took me ages to come. Now I'm not even horny. No. Well, mind you, it's probably. Yeah, it's a no hassle. bad thing. I am. Um, I. What was that? Quote. That you... I was George Melly. Um, was quite. And I, Danny Baker tweeted it. Last week, I think. Love um, him, Danny Baker. Yeah, Danny Baker, I like very much. Yeah, and um, he said when he turned seventy, he became impotent and lost his libido. And um, the quote attributed to him at that time was, uh, he said it was like being unchained from a lunatic, which is amazing. Yeah, I rather like that. Is this? <clears> uh, we're in that post, post uh, internet, post meme phase mm. where smart people or slightly neurotic people like you and I instead of just saying instead of just saying uh, uh, George Melly said you have to say a quote that was attributed to George Melly said because oh, yeah. quite a lot of quotes are just misattributed to people and, and that happened before the internet and if you're, if you're doing it right as well you have to admit where you saw it yeah as well because it's um, you know otherwise someone will accuse you well you're just reading you're just quoting Danny Baker's Twitter feed now I think most quotes, uh, most quotes are Stephen Fry. Maybe everything we say has to be attributed. I don't know. Do, do we have to say if it's original thought? So at the end of this, at the end of this sentence, do I have to say James original thought? James yes. original thought. Uh, but then you're in, you, then you're in the sticky, uh, uh, sticky area. You're in a sticky. I area. haven't been in a sticky area for a long time, Nick. Where you're uh, you're actually saying this was me, and then if it turns out that you were wrong, and you're claiming it's yours. So do you know the thing is the reason we care about this stuff? Mm. I think is because so many other people seem not to care about this stuff at all. I get well, isn't, very... that tr- isn't that true for everything? I was thinking about this this week. Pretty much every problem I've noticed crop up on Twitter and in real life. Um, could be solved by people thinking about other people just for a second longer. Just a tiny bit of empathy. Yeah, yeah emp- empathy is a, a big deal. Yeah, I agree with that. I um, I think you're on to something. You're definitely on to something there. I, uh, the thing that 
I'm thinking of specifically when I think about not crediting stuff mm. is and I go through phases on Facebook of being really arsy about this uh, with people but there's a very deliberate thing that people who are trying to promote themselves or promote their brand or just don't give a shit one way or the other about mm. anything except attention do where they'll take videos of somewhere like YouTube mm -hmm. mainly off YouTube and I, I don't know if they download it from YouTube somehow or they do something that basically when they repost it in Facebook it removes all attribu attribution and all of the YouTube links or anything it becomes a bit of Facebook video yeah yeah and then that thing gets shared around. Yes, I happen to agree with people saying, oh, I'm sharing this because I happen to agree with what's said in it. Mm. Or the latest thing was the Cassette Boy, uh, the Cassette Boy remix of David Cameron's oh, yes. thing, uh, which was quite good. Is that attributed, attributable to a six-point surge that Tories have enjoyed um, in their um, popularity recently? Because people think that Cassette Boy, people think that everything David Cameron does... Albeit, a dis albeit disgusting sentiments, yeah. but in a really cool rap style. Yeah, because it was quite funky. People yeah. are thinking, oh, well, I might vote for the funky conservatives. Yeah, I mean, Eminem, I'm pretty sure it's just a performance. Yeah, because so they be. probably like uh, Mark Ronson's Uptown Funk tune. Well, in that case, I liked Cassette Boy before, but fuck yeah. Cassette Boy. <laughs> the, uh, Is that an original thought, or was that someone's Twitter feed that you read? I'm taking the bold stance and I'm saying fuck cassette boy I don't wow. know what that was somebody's trying to break into the room yeah any minute there could be like a horde of students coming here and mock us for both our, our age and for podcasting this is not a student room students don't use this room oh right it looks like one it looks like a teaching room it's a meeting room we're in a meeting room you have whiteboards in your meeting room your organisation has too much um, money if you've got digital whiteboards in your meeting rooms, la di da We don't have too much money, we just you... spend it on all the wrong things. How many um, nurses could that interactive whiteboard fed, rather than being spent uh, in this opulent palace of um, skullduggery? Out of, a uni out of a university's budget, yeah. uh, almost zero nurses. I don't know why a nurse would want to work for a university... <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm not sure I understand how how, that, how you're expecting that budget. She might want to come to university. She might want to come to university for dinner, right? So we employ nurses to come to university. No, you just feed to, them to eat. Yeah, but like no, universities you, aren't. No, you you might be thinking of restaurants. You feed you feed them so they can afford to work as nurses, right? I'm not. I'm not sure that either of us are economists. Is that how wealth redistribution works? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I don't know. I think if we fed them here, mm. then we'd be feeding them in the refectory, which um, is entirely uh, staffed and run by uh, a third-party company that we get in mm. to pay for stuff. So it isn't sub to to not to pay for stuff to do stuff. So it isn't subsidised at all. It's uh, they don't work for the university, but they do work for the university. I think the cleaners are the same. A lot of people who work at the university don't work at the university. Are you outsourced? I'm not outsourced. Okay, but I think it's only a matter of time. Yeah, you could be. But so someone in India could pretty easily do your job, I reckon. They could probably yes, they yeah. might even look a bit like me. And it would increase the diversity quotient of your university yes I mean you're diverse yourself I'm more diverse than maybe if you outsourced one of the much more Anglo-Saxon people then that would increase the diversity if more. I moved to a different continent would you would you be happier about my Anglo-Saxon heritage no oh. you're one of the few people in this whole town nay this whole country mm. Who I would rather stayed exactly where they are. Not emotionally, mm. but like geographically, you're where I want you to be. I was musing on my privilege this morning at half past five. Seems like a healthy thing to do. Yeah, well, I've been having nightmares. The the um, medication I uh, I'm taking at the moment caused me to dream very vividly, and I had this horrible circular nightmare mm. where my wife was leading a gang of people that I've known throughout my life. Um, 
uh, trying to lure me into different scenarios where they were going to kill me. So I was basically spent however long it was in bed fighting people, trying to stop them, getting them then avoiding situations where they might ambush me. I don't know actually whether it's down to... Obviously, I feel awkward in social situations. I've got my 40th birthday coming up in a fortnight. Oh, yeah. Um, and I've gone to great pains to make sure that we don't do anything particularly... I don't want to. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm at the centre of attention for my birthday. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. The, I think. I think the problem is I enjoy it, but I feel guilty for enjoying it. It's, yeah. it's really complicated, and probably best I talk to a therapist about it rather than you. Um, no, because I can relate to that. A little well, bit. you can relate to it, but you're not really trying to sort of help me therapeutically. I might. I, um, might, I might. So I've not been helping all this time. No, no, quite the opposite. Um, Right. Okay. So, can I just check? This is your this is your sleep meds. My, my yeah. My, well, they're 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 antidepressants, but they're also they're a sedative. Right. Okay. Um. So they help me sleep. I, I think they've also been cutting through my anxiety because I, I I'm feeling less anxiety as a rule since I've been taking them. So uh, something I need to talk to the doctor about next week. Um. So yeah, it's my birthday in a fortnight. And I've told Nicola that I don't want to make a fuss. We're gonna, we have a birthday within a month of each other, so we're gonna go out and we're gonna, inviting all our friends out for on Nikki's birthday, and we're gonna make it a joint thing. But I, I desperately didn't want to make it up around mine because of the discomfort I feel. So it's possible that the the, the dreams I'm having is about the ang- I'm getting the anxiety out in my dreams maybe at the moment, but um, they're terrible. I, I I have quite a lot of not brilliant ones at the moment. I find it very uncomfortable. It's, but it's, yeah, I was musing on my privilege. Yeah, I was watching BBC Breakfast and thinking how lucky I was to be able to sit there and find what I was watching completely facile um, and vacuous. Yeah, um, but I, I felt like I was lucky to have the opportunity to sit there and feel that. Well, because we're we're very well represented in BBC News Breakfast thing, aren't we? Yeah, I think there's quite when you're feeling in a sort of heightened state of. Excuse me, when you're in a heightened state of... Ephelius. Oh, yeah, but I should have had lunch. When you're um, in a heightened state of emotion already, it's probably not be- it's probably best not to watch four or five episodes of Russell Brand's Trues, which actually I think is quite good. Um, and I quite like the way he breaks down some... He, he challenges people to think about things in a different way that, that um, uh, plays into my confirmation biases mm-hmm. about things so obviously I'm going to be attracted to it but I think it'll actually he breaks be... it down in ways that, that less intelligent people who might have come to those conclusions themselves can no well, no, not necessarily he's present he's pre- he's, he's sh- no I don't, I don't think that's entirely fair I think um, he, he I don't want to sit here and start defending Russell Brand I quite like him I understand other people find him very annoying um, I still think he's quite funny but um, I, I quite enjoy his sort of take down takedowns of the American media, and frankly, you know, it's, it's a bit like um, obviously um, John Stewart does it much better. But I'm, given that he's a left voice, and I kind of agree with much of what he says, I'm quite pleased if he finds a young audience to to talk about um, some of the. I, I like the, the stuff he says about the narrative of fear. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was. Yeah, I, I quite like the stuff he did in terms of the Paris and Copenhagen shootings and comparing them to um, the shootings of the three Muslim students recently, and and showing how the different narratives um, occur. I, you know, you and I both came to that conclusion, and, and I expect many other people would. But you never know if he's reaching an audience that that would otherwise only have a mainstream media audience. Then I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Um, but then, yeah, juxtapose that with turning on BBC Breakfast News and they're doing a puff piece on, um, oh, God, who was it? Oh, bloody um, Frank LaBeouf, the ex-Chelsea footballer, is an actor now. And apparently that, that required five minutes of our time this morning to learn about how Frank LaBeouf would like to have a World Cup winner's medal and an Oscar. And that's news. So it's, it's it's uh, so it, it, there was a, a real juxtaposition between the two things I was watching, which I was feeling discombobulated anyway. It left me feeling a little bit weird. I can't watch the news unless it's via Charlie Brooker these days. It turns out 
not not normal broadcast news. It's too. It's is that because you is that because you don't know how to snark at it yourself? You need someone. To yeah, yeah. Show you how uh, to snark at it. The, thi- the, the thing that uh, the thing that I found interesting about last year's the wipe of last year, yeah, is there were certain things where, and I don't know if it's that he's mellowing or if he do- or if he's still having to get things through uh, BBC. Um, infrastructure, although that seems unlikely considering th- some of the stuff that's in there. Or um, do you think his power was in his hair? May, well, may his hair since since his marriage to uh, TV's Connie Huck. Well, it might be the, his hair's been getting nicer. Fatherhood is mellowing him out. Well, yeah. That doesn't seem to have happened to us. But um, the, the uh, or maybe he's just tired. But there were certain things like they were very acerbic about certain things. Actually, I think what happened was the things that I was interested in mm. uh, were largely things that were happening in America over the last the, the, the shootings the various uh, police shootings shootings mm. by police um, and killings by police mm. didn't didn't take up as big a part of that show yeah. as they did of my like the the stuff I was absorbing last year, your think space. Yeah, so it, so it was kind of, but then that makes sense because he's making stuff for a, a British audience, and yeah. that that wasn't much in mm. our news. But I like, I, I tend to prefer. There's an irreverence to what Charlie Brooker does that just feels a little bit more broad sure. and just generally cynical mm-hmm. than than I. Get then I I've watched a couple of the truest things and I I don't know but I mean that's besides the point I I think I don't, I don't dislike them I but then again it's because he's playing straight into my my bias sphere yeah I um, do I do that thing as well is it uh, Dan Harmon well he, Dan Harmon's not the only person I, I've seen sorry. say this recently there's a couple of people who've said this who I've who've seen say, say this recently or or express this sentiment recently and it's one that if I was more popular or if I was actually well known I think I can relate to which is they want people to like them they're like they're like doing stuff to get people to like them I'm doing handsome you're doing taste. politician pointing pointing Nick's nipple, doing nipple Nick's, pointing. Do, Nick's doing that that sort of closed I'm hand thumb. Thumb. he's basically he's made a fist with his thumb on top of his fists and he's doing it's, like politician to I'm I'm asserting the point but I'm not being threatening it's so weird because, as I said at the beginning, James and I are sat roughly the same distance mm. apart that we normally are, but he's at the table because I've got a louder yeah. voice. I'm I'm way back from the table, and it feels like I, I'm not allowed to sit near the table. You're not. Well, I'm not, but like yeah. I, it feel it feels like a very specific. I feel like uh, I'm being interviewed. It's very weird. One of the conditions of me doing podcasts with you is you're not within touching distance. That's true. It's yeah. too much. It's yeah, too yeah, it's too, too distracting. But the, but the the sentiment is that like you kind of. Want want people to like you, not you, but that you want people to like you. But then, no, when people, but then when people like like do like you, you hate yourself so much mm. that you just start resenting them for it. No, that is me. Is, which is um, no, that's okay. That's you. It's also Dan Harmon. Yeah. It's a little bit me. I, I and I get the feeling Charlie Brooker is is one of those people like Chris mm. Morris, like people like that who they kind of are cynical about a whole bunch of people. I mean, they want to be successful because they're in show business, but like, mm. they're cynical about the people who aren't on the same side as them. But then, when people start getting too close, they're like, "Why would you want to be?" Yeah, you know what I mean. That's like, no, you're just as bad. You're awful mm. because they're very self-aware and very. They seem to be very self-aware and very um, self-critical. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, Russell Brand is. But in a very twelve-step program sort of a way. Yeah, and he's like. also he's very he's he's kind of he's because uh, I'm not in a Russell Brand mindset, but he's very unapologetic about who he and what he is. Yeah, and and he's quite happy. And I, I kind of the, one of the reasons I hate that personality type is I desperately wish that I had. I wish I could be more like it. Mm. To be honest, it's because his politics really aren't aren't that bad. I, I find it really hard to understand why people hate him quite as much as they seem to. But then you know, it's all subjective. Isn't I think it? a lot of people hate him for very different reasons. Maybe, and that's the problem. That's the problem with any sort of defensive narrative of anyone is if it's someone nuanced enough. Some people hate him because he's a bit of a man slut. 
Some people hate him because he's got stupid hair, which I couldn't possibly comment on because I've got stupid hair. Well, I quite like his hair. Yeah, but but it, but you quite like me. That's true. So, yeah, that's so true, yeah. um, some people like him, dislike him because of his politics. Some people dislike him because he's literally the loudest voice in that particular area of politics, and it should be better. And that's almost. And that's the thing I always feel about him is you get. I can understand why people would feel the need to defend him to me, but I don't have a problem with him. I have a problem with the fact that he's literally the best voice we've got. Maybe maybe his problem, I was thinking a little bit about this last night, um, they were talking about um, social mobility on the, um, on the radio, and as part of that conversation, they were talking about, um, and I think America is more so than we are, but living in a met- uh, metatocracy... Mm-hmm. Where Merit. um, mer- meritocracy, where a metatocracy. Sorry, meri- me- yeah, sorry, I, I, yeah, meritocracy, which, which I think um, celebrity skews that. Yeah. So we 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 kind of live in uh, an economy that that should be a meritocracy, where people who do useful things. Um, so the people who have the ideas, the people who are able to save lives, the people who are able to innovate, are the people at the top of the at the top of the ladder. And I think, in terms of like social justice, then, well, well, yeah, they they probably should be. And I think how you help people get there is a very different conversation. But the problem is we live in a skewed meritocracy because celebrity is so important. Mm. And and people don't get to be celebrities based on. Um, positive qualities they often get to be there because of negative qualities mm. that give them publicity so it's celebrities completely skewing the values of our society anyway so i don't know if i've got a problem with someone who who's if someone so i'm pleased that someone's saying the things he is I just I wish it was someone who was able to organise more coherently around it. So uh, someone who wasn't quite so much because you, you the, the great fear with Brand is is obviously well then you know once he's finished this phase of his career because there's part of me that thinks is he is he on a Kaufman esque type piss take as well you know it's quite possibly is who can tell but it's a shame that some so there isn't a person in his position who's earned it through genuine merit through their sort of political chops or, or having done good rather than someone who's got to that point as a spokesman for for that area of left-leaning thinking or progressive thinking whatever you want to call it it's a shame that it's a celebrity that, that that's there because it makes it feel vacuous well yeah i mean it does but it, it feels I feel like I've known a lot of people like him. The problem with someone who uses words the way he does as well mm. is that when you've known people who use words mm. the way he does, that vacuousness kind of, it, it feels like a big old word balloon. I get really uncomfortable about that yeah. because um, I work in an environment with people who've had similar backgrounds with me and I get criticised for my vocabulary. Yeah, but you've and got I don't, vocabulary, you're not I d- like... Yeah, but I don't... I, 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 I use words that I think are appropriate. It's possible that he's doing that too, and I sort of... I, but he came from... You know, um, his background w- was different from mine in so much as mine was much more comfortable, I think. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of get that whole... Um, I'll be honest, I've I've got a bit of a sort of lower middle class chip on my shoulder about I was brought up in an environment where we weren't expected to... I You know, you're expected to go in a trade, basically. Mm-hmm. That was my schooling, was someone from my background, learn yourself a trade, son. That's what you're meant to do. There were no expectations for me to go on and go to university and um, expand my mind and my knowledge. So uh, I've had to learn things myself. And, and I have a quite a weird, lumpy vocabulary, often mispronounced words, yeah. um, or often misuse them as well. I, so there's part of me that kind of empathises with that whole... You know, he, he's, he's sort of... It feels like he's sort of... He's come from this background and the language is uh, an attempt from someone from that bank background to try and get on the same level of discourse or what he sees as being the same level of discourse as those in the sort of the upper echelons of society. Because I kind of feel the same. It's like, you know, I, I, I've... There are times when I feel really 
acutely aware of the fact that I didn't have a university education. I sort of didn't. So I feel like I've missed out on something in terms of um, learning how to think in a more critical way. In a, it, it's so I, I get it. So I get a bit a bit prickly and defensive when I hear people um, criticising his his vocabulary. I don't think that's unusual. Mm. I mean. There's lots of things that are unusual about you. I don't think that's unusual. I certainly don't think it's unusual about people defending certain people. Mm. And I think sometimes Brand is one of those people because he mentions it a lot. Whenever people talk about him using obfuscating language and Mm. stuff like that, I think. Um, Or or whenever people talk about his mode of speech he brings up the narrative which is the way people get elected in America it's the mm-hmm. same sort of narrative the, the the narrative of a guy from like a uh, quite a difficult or rough background mm-hmm. who's who's done well for himself and is trying mm. to like has tried to better himself. And oh, stuff definitely, like his narrative so it, is is the, the the phoenix from adversity. And it's really, and I think it's really easy to project yourself. Mm. Uh, it's really easy to project things onto that. Yeah, I'm not saying that's what's happening, but certainly w- when I look at you, the way you use words and the way he does, I've never known you to use. I've never known you to use good words recklessly or I've never known you to when you use your vocabulary mm. it's to try and actually communicate something clearly in a way that other words don't work for you and mm. I come from I mean I know I sound very posh I don't really but I know I sound more Through posh me, mate. but like you've met my sisters you yeah. know that I'm not like it's mm. it's for me it was a force of effort mm. I, I was lucky enough lucky enough I, I mean I don't know it's kind of it, most of the places we lived most of the places we moved to after a certain point in my life mm. were places where me t- I could find people who talked yeah. the way I wanted to and I could because mm. I because I'm all of the people I knew were in the mm. library at school yeah look, you know I, what I mean I, it wasn't the playground I was in the library but there were other people there I think I have but, to uh, sorry I, I, I have to cop to the fact that I, I also admit that although expectations were low had I applied myself a little harder at school then actually I could have crawled out of of that bubble of expectation but I th- th- I also kind of made choices but there was a lot more pressure on you socially than there was on me oh yeah because I mean because like, we moved a lot so I was sure. always the new kid I, I never felt after a certain point I never felt the need to it wasn't like I had to behave in a certain way to mm. keep certain friends because I was getting to redefine mm. I mean it didn't feel like that positive a thing at the time, mm. but I got to redefine myself in each place. I didn't. I didn't have to do that. But mm-hmm. everyone you talked to, who didn't necessarily have a great time growing up, who lived in the same place mm. for a really long time, gets has a sort of a similar story where where well not. They well, no, I, have... I used to get slapped around because I knew what was happening in the news. Yeah, because my dad listened to the Today program, so Where... yeah, I had to I had to dumb down the fit fit in, which sounds really pretentious. No, 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 but no, no I, I can, I can, I, I get it, I completely get it. But I was quite lucky because I had that frog ball situation where each time I, when I started a new school, I got to, I got to look at everything from an outside perspective, and if there were people who were assholes. Or not even who were assholes, but who were more tra- traditional or more judgmental or more anti-intellectual or whatever. Mm. I was coming in from the outside, so you can kind of see, well, okay, I'm not going to fit in with those guys anyway. Sure. Because I never get picked for the football team and, and stuff like that. I'm not going to fit in with those guys. I mean, But then most of my friends were girls at school. Partly because those were, those are the people I gravitated towards. Well, me too. But yeah. like, um, I know that they're not very nice to each other, mm-hmm. but they're just generally gentler, not gentler, but like, it's it's generally more about talking and listening and stuff like that in girl groups at school than it is among boys, which is all about conformity. I mean, it's all about conformity. Oh, much of much of my sort of mid-teens was uh, uh, there was a group of sort of six or seven goths goth girls that sort of took me under their yeah. <laughs> took me under their wing a little bit. I mean, and and um, 
and so I could always find people who talked the way who but I mean I spent a big chunk of my life not going out like teachers when I was much younger mm. I spent nearly all of my time in the library at school and at that point the library was a room smaller than the one we're in it like more like the studios we're normally in but sure. I managed to read nearly all the books in it because I didn't like going out in the playground because I just sure. couldn't fit in with all of that stuff so so I'm not saying it was all roses but by the time I was going to schools that had bigger libraries and had like students working in the like like I, one school I went to I was friends with the other people who volunteered in the libraries at lunchtime and stuff like sure. that who were all students so I didn't have to struggle to find people who talked like me but I listened to you and you talk like Ray Winston but you've got a de- you've got a decent vocabulary like a, quite a large vocabulary and you use lots of really fucking cool words to be honest but I have never known you to obfuscate your point by using sure. lots of those words in a sequence but I understand I understand why you why you see that in someone like mm-hmm. Russell Brand but when I see him I, it's not that different to what I see when I look at Stephen Fry Sure. Because he has a lot of ticks. He's very intelligent as well, mm-hmm. but he also has a very he has a lot of ticks and behaviours and ways that he behaves that really am, amp up the distance between him and people who can't talk like him and don't understand what. Sure. So it's like a, a lot of a lot of the oh god he's he's a national treasure and he's really intelligent and stuff. A lot of that comes from him. Because he is very eloquent, a lot of it comes from his researchers on QI, <laughs> but a lot of it, a lot of it comes from the fact that that most people don't talk like that. So when he's just using, when he's just noodling with language, you know, like guitarists, sure, like a guitarist could just turn up and play the song, and they could be fucking amazing, but you'd never really know mm. them. But like, nearly anyone can probably go up and do a bit of noodling or turn up with a guitar to a party and start noodling and if you can't do what they're doing you think fucking hell that guy's good mm. but actually he might not be that good sure. he might just be the guy who's willing to turn up at a party with a guitar and we know what those people are like oh I hate those guys <laughs> I don't know we've ended up talking about to be fair I've never been at one of those parties I, if you turned up at a party that I used to the sort of parties I used to go to when I was younger with a guitar someone would have broken it within half an hour of you being there but so. did people turn up with record decks no. Yeah. Well, well I mean, no. They would already be. They'd, really... all, they'd already be decks there. They turn yeah. up with records here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I feel like at least this time you're the one who's mainly been talking about Russell Brand and not me. Well, yeah. I've been watching so... him this morning, so it's been on my mind. Yeah. So I thought I... I thought I'd go to you with it. Um, I uh, sad news about Tony Hart. We don't need to go into yeah, that. Yeah. Sad tragic, news. Though. Five years ago, it's awful. Yeah. Uh, the thing about me on the internet is I have clearly done a really good job. Um, of of pushing this persona where I seem really stupid because when I make a joke about not understanding or what I think is a really obvious joke about not being sure if Tony Hart's dead or not now lo- lots of lots of people jump in to inform me it's very nice they're being yeah. very helpful um, but... you need to do the 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 Emicon with the slanty slanty mouth yeah <laughs> <laughs> um uh, someone introduced me to oh and you'll love this oh especially because we've kind of been talking we've been talking about Russell Brand uh, we didn't talk about Billy Bragg but we might as well have done like this Billy is probably Bragg. someone you already know um, is it John Thackeray I don't I don't know I don't know um a um let me find this I'm going to say no and then then you can edit in me saying yes if I recognise who it is later on it's fine it's potentially it, uh yeah, a uh, guy I met online recently, I think because he listened to We Have Issues, okay. uh, called, he goes by the name Professor Jack Darcy. Is he a real professor? I don't know if he's a real professor, but he is a real Jack Darcy. He um, Is that rhyming slang for something? No, I don't think okay. so. He does, uh, he seems very nice. Don't, I mean, I know him as well as you can know anyone online. Um, or in real life, I suppose. Or in real life, really. You can't really know people, can you? Uh, but he I think he only started doing it relatively recently or certainly that's the narrative or the persona he's got Um, but he does uh, like folk satirical folk 
Songs. songs. Cool. Uh, that he writes himself, but last night he shared a, a cover version he did of, I think it's John Thackray. Hang on. It might be Jake Thackray. Now I'm really... Now this is really... Why don't you just say a chap right? called Jay Thackray? I'm going, I'm going back through the tweets, and, and people keep referring to him uh, as Th- Thackray. I think it's Jake Thackray. Jake Thackray. Thackray or Thackray? Thackray. Okay. But he's, uh, I guess, from the 60s or 70s. The video I watched last okay. night looked, looked, looked very... Um, looked like it was probably from around the 70s or 80s, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and apparently there's a DVD coming out soon. I'd never heard of him, but he's uh, he's part of that old method of uh, that old model of uh, Darcy referred. Dar- Darcy said he's got this um, um, amazing facility with English, but sings in the French style. And I didn't really know what that meant, but like lots of um, it's just him and a guitar and someone else with a guitar and lots mm. of satirical. Um, thoughtful, mainly I guess socialist leaning, mm-hmm. or yeah, so socialist leaning um, songs, but really clever. The one I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But the one that uh, uh, Jack Darcy did a cover of, a really good cover of, is all about bulls. But it's actually all about uh, uh, how shit flows downhill. And or you want it. Is it? Well, it's. I mean, I'm not sure if it's actually about shit. Okay. It's about the rule. It's about not not allowing the ruling class to get too high. I mean, I don't want to ruin the metaphor, but it's all about not allowing, not putting the ruling class on too high a pedestal because uh, the higher a pedestal you put, the higher up they are, the more it hurts. Well, when yeah, because I mean, they get to a certain point and their their shit's going to hit terminal velocity. Yeah, and that's exactly. And you don't really hurt when it hits. You do not want terminal velocity shit hitting you. No, you, you. don't. Um, so, if, 120 something miles an hour. Yeah, 120. For shit, I'm sure it is. 120 something. And like, if you think, if mm. you think in terms of how, if you drop a coin off the Empire State Building, yeah. or the World Trade Center, it won't kill you. Uh, may they rest in peace. It won't. Well, it would kill you. No, it, it wouldn't. You. No, it's been thoroughly tested by MythBusters. But what would happen? It would really hurt. Oh, okay. But it wouldn't kill you. No, it would really hurt. What if it hit you in the head? It would really hurt. <laughs> I think like a brick would kill you, but a coin wouldn't kill you. This, this it would cut the skin, but it hasn't got the, it hasn't got the force to go through your skull. This changes everything. <laughs> I did not know this. And apparently, um, they again, I learned this from the top of the. Um, from so from Mythbusters is apparently uh, the Empire State's building. Um, there's a lip that goes around the top, and apparently once a year, I think it is, they go and clean. There's like loads and loads of coins. People actually go up there to throw thinking coins on, yeah. the myth is true and, and throw it. coins, but they don't ever get off the top of the Empire State's building because there's a lip that prevents you from being able to do that. So how high would you have to go before a coin would kill you? Well, I think the coin can still reach terminal velocity, so it can't go any faster than its terminal velocity. Um, so I don't think a, a coin can go through your head at its at its terminal velocity. You would have to force it to go faster by using, say, like some form of propulsion, like a gun. So if you dropped a because if you drop a bullet uh, and it hits you at terminal velocity, it won't kill you. It has to be propelled in a, using that explosion from a gun. So if you drop a coin from a, a an aeroplane or a satellite, it will still only uh, reach terminal velocity. It, there is a point where it can't go any faster. I feel naturally using just using gravity. I feel like science fiction might have lied to me about so many things. Yeah, that, you need you need propulsion as well. Like you, you can't just rely on its the speed that gravity pulls something at. Okay, so we've talked about science. Yeah, we're in an unusual position because you can see how long we've been going and what the time 39 is. Thirty nine and a half minutes. So. And we talked about science. Yes, we've talked about your your mental health or our mental health in general. A little bit, yeah. A little bit of childhood. Yeah. Um, talked about Russell Brand. Tick. Eh. Tick. Tick. Russell Brand. Ticking it off has to be. Well, I think we've been slacking a little bit on Russell Brand. Yeah. In a few, and I don't think I've mentioned Stephen Fryer in ages. No, it's good we've able to get them both in. Maybe whoever's looking after the wiki. Yeah. So if you're keeping this data, yeah. and you can update your jotter as well. Yeah. Um. We should really talk about our children. Don't really want to. Yeah, okay. 
We saw we saw you at the weekend. That was lovely. It was nice, although again, I was in a, a funny mood as well. well and I Scarlett was, had been ill all week, so she was... Yeah, I, she was tired, and I maybe I was a bit frazzled. I can't actually remember. Oh, uh, we were writing uh, something to do with my work that was making me feel a bit frazzled. Yeah. Which I'm assuming you don't want to talk about. No, yeah, no. Maybe later. Yeah. But the uh, the but it was nice. I had a nice time. I don't yeah. think you were any weirder than normal. Good. No, I had a nice time too. Uh, the Noah was kind of all over the place. He was lovely. He he's very mobile at the moment. He really is. And very interested in the world. I rather liked it. There was a point when I was outside having a cigarette. Uh, so the, the back door was open. I was stood outside, and he came tottering towards me. And I sort of put the cigarette as far away from him as I could and went to try and stop him from coming out. Instead of being discouraged to come out, he just leant into me yeah. to try and get out. It's like, all oh, right, no, well, he's not going to drop me, so I'm out. It's great. Maybe they're all that fearless, but it certainly surprises me because it's just not, Amy and I are not mm. f- physically fearless at all, you know. No, I, so think, I think we spoke about this, actually, when Scarlett was going through a similar phase, didn't we? And it's sort of, uh, I, I remember just sort of like, well, I just want to be, so I, I, I don't chip away so much of yeah. that. She ends up like me. And I definitely, I roughhouse, I'm I'm not sure if I've mentioned it before, I'm surprised by how much I roughhouse with him. Mm. Because I wouldn't have thought I'd be that sort of dad. I knew I was going to be into him, but the whole chucking him around and stuff like that, I really didn't think was something that I'd gravitate towards. And you know that the the baby has their personality, but a lot of Mm -hmm. of what is normal to them is stuff that you're comfortable with. So... That surprised me. The weirdest thing about there being a new baby Im- imminent, actually, for me, is... Even is that the name you've settled on? New baby imminent. Imminent yeah. is going to be it's the name. beautiful name. It's uh, inspired by Imogen. I don't like the yeah. name Imogen, though, but I like her uh, because there was that... Uh, you, wanted something song. That, you wanted something that felt a bit more immediate. Yes, m- much more immediate, but not quite here. Yeah. Penultimate. Yeah. Not penultimate. Yeah. Like uh, that. Uh, if you have twins, is that what the other? That's what the yeah, other imminent and penultimate. That that is that thing, isn't there? Where if you close the distance between you and a place, yeah, by half and then by half and then yeah. by half again, you'll never get there. And so, if the child is called imminent, yeah, they'll always be imminent, yeah. but they'll never arrive. I'm imminent. I have arrived. Yes, which is uh, definitely something I have said during sex. Yeah, but not with another person. No, uh, but. Uh, so, but one of the one of the oddest things, I feel like uh, I feel like we should step back to where I said uh, Im- Imogen like the John Lennon song because I don't I don't think I don't think we took enough time with that gag and it's one that I stole from uh, Bad News or more Bad News. Is it Imogen all the people? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't remember how I I, I, I I watched Bad News that not that long ago. It's. Uh, it's weird because it's clearly inspired by Spinal Tap, yeah. and it's not quite as good as no, Spinal Tap. No, it's not Tap. as good as Spinal so, Tap. So it never, it never quite got the traction it deserved, I think. But there are some good gags in, and I think the is Imogen that or is it Spinal Tap? It's not in Spinal Tap. Yeah. Anyway, so go uh, go watch Bad News and Spinal. Watch them in listener. Watch Bad News first, mm. and then rewatch or watch for the first time Spinal Tap. It's on four OD. Which one? Well, bad news. Because if you watch Spinal Tap first and then bad news, that's just going to be uh, d- disappointing. And Spinal Tap, I don't know where that is. On, I've got it on DVD. So it's all over. I'm sure it's all over the place. Yeah. Netflix has got loads of... Uh, it has surprised me by having lots of more recent films on it. Like Raid 2 was on there and... Uh, uh, it's the only one I can think of. I'm right very now. fond of Netflix. I've I've never been disappointed by signing up for my subscription, I have to say. Me either. Yeah, uh, Amy's rewatching the L Word. I'm, w- I'm watching Breaking Bad. That's uh, Breaking Bad's supposed to be good. I've heard a few people mention it. It, it is, yeah. You, you probably won't have heard of it, but yeah. the um, the L Word. I watched the first and Community. So I'm still just about to finish Community. I love this. Th- Amy hates the TV program, but loves the theme tune. We've got the full length version. Oh, of it. yeah, no the theme tune, and it's really good. It's quite depressing. The full length version yeah, of that song, pretty depressing. The short bit they yeah. used, to be honest. Um, but it's it's we love it. It's a car. It's a car favorite. I saw the first episode of Breaking Bad when it aired, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's quite good. Odd little niche show. Might get back to that at some point. I still can't quite. I've had to take a rest from Breaking Bad. If you've watched it, I saw Peekaboo recently. The episode Peekaboo, and um, 
I didn't realise how dark the programme was going to be until I watched Peekaboo, and that really was a heartbreak. It's basically... Um, the the episode is Jesse, the younger member of the of the um of the two uh bads. Is that what they call it? Is that what it's called? I guess, Breaking Bad. I guess. The bad lads. He he goes to um, one of his one of his meth dealers has been stiffed by a couple of junkies, um and Walter insists that Jesse goes to sort it out himself and show what a badass he is. Um, and he ends up at the house of these two junkies who are a, a real mess. Brilliant makeup, I hope. Um, but they have a they have a, a child in the house, and a whole episode um, when you're all of Jesse's story is set in that house for that episode. And there's a lot of interaction between him and the child, and it's heartbreaking. Yeah, that sounds pretty grim. Yeah, but I, also really interesting that they went there, and I, I that. People's, How far in are you though? Is that that's the second series? In the right. second series, that happens. The first series is short. It was foreshortened by the writers' strike. Um, back in when was that? Oh nine, oh eight. Was it that long ago? Yeah, a while ago. Um, we watched. Uh, Amy's rewatching the L Word. I'm hearing. I'm. I'm listening to a lot of it while I'm doing stuff on the computer. I do like that show. It is no Breaking Bad. I am led to believe, <laughs> but there is a lot of attractive women having sex in it. Sure. That's well. That's that's the internet, really, isn't it? Um, and a, a lot of the characters, I, I, she's watched it twice. This is the third time Amy's rewatching it. It's become mm-hmm. a comfort thing, and um, and I'm. This is, I think, the second time I'm listening to it. Like I watched the whole first series with her. That watched it all with her the first time. Uh, it's interesting how when you rewatch something, characters that took you a real long time for you to warm to you're watching them early on and you're like I don't understand how I didn't get it there's, yeah. a, there's a character in it called Shane who is androgynous and she's a bit of a badass and she's really laconic when all of the other characters are talking all the time and telling you how they feel the whole time she's very laconic she looks kind of like a guy everyone loves her she's just like a shagging women left right and centre like all it's kind of her thing and she has loads of one night stands and I, I didn't. Neither of us connected with her for ages, um, and now we just. Amy's rewatching it, and every time Shane sort of says something, I'm like, I'm like Shane is. So, I just say it over because I can hear it over him. I'm like, oh god, Shane's fucking awesome, isn't she? And Amy's like, yeah. But so, and we've been rewatching Saw, the Saw movies. Um, you were you were rewatching them last week. We uh, Amy, we're at, we're at the point in the films where every time one finishes now. I turn to Amy and go, oh, you know, even though we've watched it before, I'm still... The, it's so it's so clever the way they play with your uh, expectations as a viewer mm. and the way they mess around with time. And she says, hmm. Eh. She's very tired. She is very pregnant at this point. Um, very. She goes, eh. And I'm like, well, did you not enjoy it? And I like, well, I'm a bit tired. And, you know, I, I, I'm not really that bothered about all of the all of the plot stuff I just like it when the horrible things happen I'm like that's basically how Amy and I watch films that's fine though she has I mean she has got this human being inside of her sort of sucking all of her resources out of her I don't blame her being a little bit well but I've always had a human being inside of me so so anyway uh, how we got onto this I was um, oh when I watched the first episode of the new series of Justified last night that was dark you kind of uh, get this... You reminded me of it, talking about Breaking Bad. Um, uh, this is the last series of Justified. And Justified is what I, I call that sort of thing, rural noir. You know, stuff about a small town or small mm-hmm. towns, the Dust Bowl part of, like, really poor parts of America, but with uh, uh, hard-drinking police, like law enforcement doing stuff is it set in the 30s or, or is it set in the I said air? Dust Bowl I don't know why it's more it's about like the panhandle and stuff. And yeah yeah, yeah. It's, um, I guess I mean I, I get the feeling middle America I get the feeling there are lots of parts of America that are a bit like that so geographically I'm probably well the Dust Bowl was a big strip right down the middle yeah so the, I think that's sort of a place that was a boom town that had mm, like sort of uh, Texas uh, lots to... of coal and now doesn't and mm. um and just from the first episode, there have been two main guys, one played by Walton Goggins, who's amazing, mm-hmm. one played by Timothy Oliphant, 
who they're um, one's a lawman, one's a criminal. They're both assholes, though, and uh, they've both been kind of circling each other to a lesser or greater extent. Like if if every show has to have a big bad now, um, Boyd Crowder hasn't been the big bad in a lot lot of seasons, but he's been there and and he's always been in uh, Raylan Givens' sights. But they've started this first season off with um, there have been certain staple characters. It's never been afraid of getting rid of characters, sure. but there've been these staple characters throughout. And the first season kind of starts with them saying, "Look, this is probably our last season." So we're not going to keep all of these guys around. And it's it's just everyone's kind of talked about how this season, oh God, this season, because everyone decides how shows have to end. Yes. Obviously, like about the after the second or third episode. Well, that's the like, most important well, thing about the show. Well, about the end. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but people are talked about how if it doesn't end with one of them killing the other one or them killing each other, blah, 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 blah. Um, I like shows to end like the way that the writers decide to. Yeah, yeah. And I like it or I'll not like it. Because that's what you're tuning in for, isn't it? Yeah. I think. But um, but it's definitely the stakes have definitely because there have been times when it's been quite a weirdly fluffy show, which is not afraid to have like fun. The way everyone talks is quite laconic mm-hmm. and lends itself to ridiculously dark comedy interactions between people. But so anyway, I watched that last night, um, and uh, that wasn't what I was talking about. Baby, imminent baby. The baby's going to be called imminent. Yeah, I've just decided. We've been yeah. talking about names for ages, but I've decided. Do you imminent. know what sex the baby is? Because I know I don't. No, but that's yeah. the good thing about the name imminent. Yeah, it works could for be, both could be either, Yeah, um, stole that joke from Brooklyn Nine Nine, a recent episode of that. Um, the uh, not the name. The name's all imminent. Is me original? I think. But anyway, so baby's in him, and then, and the one I, thing that yeah. I'm a little bit worried about, or the the one thing that's striking me as a little bit weird, Noah's only like he's only eighteen months old, mm. and they're tiny for such a long time at the beginning, and yeah. you're much more focused, I think, when they're completely dependent on you, and when they're very very tiny. But the thing I'm thinking is going to be weirdest is having to relearn. I wasn't nervous about how I was going to hold Noah when he was born. sure I knew I was going to be careful and I kind of wasn't nervous about that I am nervous about the new one. I was thinking exactly the same thing in terms of the level of commitment you've got to go back into but Scarlet is at a, a level of sort of maintenance that's so low now mm. that much as we'd love to have another child into our family it would freak me out having to go back to that because actually one of the things I noticed when you come around with Noah is how much more that that constant having to get up and see what they're up to to. it's like with Scarlett all I have to do is shout you alright darling issues in a different part of the flat and shish out back and give me a status update you can vaguely rely on her not getting her fingers trapped in doors and stuff like no, that yeah, so no yeah she, I mean occasionally she, in fact no, I'm the only person who's done that recently I um, did it this week but yeah for the most part she's pretty you know obviously she's dependent on us but she's you know she's sensible she did fall off the bed the other day but that's by the I by fall off the bed and it made me laugh sometimes I do it on purpose I hate I hate that I stole a I stole a line from that song from Jackass because she'd been jumping up and down on the bed and she fell off and I said Scarlett if you're going to be dumb you've got to be tough because it <laughs> that's seems a good con- one I it, think seems, that's a good- it seems kind of true that's a good lesson to be yeah. instilling in her as well yeah. um, the uh, a, fr- a friend of ours he's got a story that he tells about when his his uh, their baby boy is roughly the same age as Noah but when he was a little bit younger mm. like when they were first taking him out to soft play and things like that yeah. he was out with he was out with him at soft play and this other kid came along and tried to take something off his uh-huh. son. And I think his son just kind of pushed him. He's only lit, like a yeah. little, little for his age and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I think th- there was a scuffle. and yeah. Police were called. My, my, my friend's son, I think, came out on top of it. I might be misremembering the sure. story. But he sort of was vaguely apologetic to uh, the dad. Yeah. And the dad said, it's all right, has to learn. He's got to learn it's, that it's rough in this life or something like that. And he was like... Well, on the one hand, yeah, but on the other hand, he's six months old. <laughs> so, something ridiculous. I knock him back a couple of times a week so just to sort right of keep him sharp. Cry. But um, it, it is, it's very interesting as well, seeing how 
we are way more chilled out about Noah getting out of sight at your place than we are at ours because our dogs aren't like your dogs. Your dogs are so lovely. We drug them. Is that what it is? Yeah. The, the relationship between my son and Lois, your black lab. She loves being hugged. I... But then she goes over to him. Yeah. And he, neither of our dogs put up with that. They bonded really well. When he was coming around and we were taking him to nursery, they bonded really quickly. But it's because he will hug and fuss Lois. And Lois just sit there and allow, and she's about the right height for him to give a nice hug to her. And well. he's like lies on top of her and stuff like mm. that. I wish that, I mean, our, our bigger dog is getting too old for that sort of, she puts up with a lot, but she's, mm. when she does move around, she's too clumsy, so she'd knock him over. Yeah. And the little dog, I think, loves him, but expresses love in all sorts of negative ways that we haven't quite been able to get on top of. Fair enough. So we have to be really careful around them. But at your house, it's just lovely. Cool. But yeah, so I don't know. You've got to relearn how to hold a baby yeah. when you've been just chucking a toddler around by his ankle. I'm sure it's like riding a bike. But I'm not very good at bikes. No, nor am I. It's a worry, isn't it, really? Um... Finish my um, finish my Viper model. Oh, yeah, it looked good. Mm. Oh, well, what I saw of it looked really good. You've yeah, had to I learn have. a bit of electronics. I have, yeah. I, I, I had a, uh, uh, I said the other day, a Viper Mark II kit model, and I've um, uh, customised it myself to get um, red lights on the wing tips, and I've illuminated the cockpit with a LED light as well, wired it all up myself. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're getting really good results, and these are like your first two models. In... First two or three for a long time, yeah. I've made four in the last four months. First one was a disaster. Second one, actually going back and looking at it, is all right. Last two are all right. So, but as much as you're learning, mm. it's also quite therapeutic, isn't it? Very therapeutic. Like just being able to focus. Very on meditative, like that. meditative sort of. I can lose myself for hours in it, and rather than uh, I was doing that with you, remember I was playing Total, Ro- uh, Total War games. Yeah. What I and I was losing hours to them. What I like about the modelling is at least I have something to show at the end of it. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's what really do you mean? Lovely. You could take someone to your Total War install and say, look, I've all of Japan or all of Rome or whichever. No. All it, of that colour, that's me. All of the world, basically. Yeah, I'd yeah. play it until I, you know. Take everything. Yeah. Oh, that's how Total you Total domination. Total domination. Yeah. That's a. Uh, 50, we're probably 50 one of the only, shades of something or we're other. probably one of the only podcasts this, out this week that that hasn't covered that it's not really our thing but we're about to hit the hour mark I'd love to I'd yeah. love to talk about Fifty Shades but it's too late yeah. sorry listener uh, listener you can talk to us mm. on Twitter yeah I'm Nick Sight N-I-X-S-I-G-H-T I'm James Mom J-A-M-E-S-M-O-M-B yeah uh, we, you can email us at 2 podcast at gmail.com that's right I got it right. Yeah, well <laughs> After done. All this time. You can also listen to all of our previous episodes at two grown men, all one word, dot net. Dot all net. one word isn't in, that's just describing what's happening at the beginning there. Or subscribe to us in your podcatcher of choice. Um, if you like what we're doing, or even if you mostly like what we're doing but have a couple of criticisms, it would be very nice for us if you would share us with people. It'd be nice to know comment what, on your podcast. Yeah, of suggestions choice. for what you find more entertaining or less entertaining. That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, we probably can't change at this point yeah, but no, I mean yeah. it'd be nice to know yeah. um, there's also a mailing list that sometimes I write to uh, it's tinyletter.com forward slash 2gm and um, and that's really just the best place to see me we talk about James's mental health on the podcast and mm. I express mine uh, through the medium of a mailing list every now and then and if I get the chance I get a recipe off James as well so uh, so that's there it's very we, we won't hassle you with emails yeah. we barely ever write yeah. to it yeah. um, I think that's us yes yeah. cheers bye 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 bye